The Injustice video games are a DC superhero game of arcade style fights. And unlike a lot of games of this genre, the game developers Neverrealm have a story mode included in their games, so you not only get a game, but you also get a superhero movie to watch. Now in Injustice there are quite a few deaths, and this is the list of the 5 best deaths in the story mode of Injustice 1 and Injustice 2. I must say that this video obviously contains spoilers, so consider yourself warned. This list will only feature deaths in the video game story mode, so no deaths in the characters ending scenes or deaths that feature in the Injustice tying comics will be featured on this list. Number 5. Gorilla Grodd This is probably the best rendition I have ever seen of Gorilla Grodd in both TV, comics and films. His character is captured perfectly and his psychic powers and physical strength are incredibly intimidating. And his death is probably the most justified execution on this list. In the game, he teams up with Brainiac to take over the world. And though it is later revealed that Brainiac is going to destroy the world, not take it over, Gorilla Grodd still goes along with him, planning to one day kill Brainiac and take his technology and power for his own. I'll wait until that alien exposes his weakness and kill him with his ship. I will be unstoppable. But during Brainiac's plan, Gorilla Grodd comes up against Aquaman and Black Adam, both of whom strongly believe in capital punishment. You've never understood Atlantis, Bruce. We are an ancient people with an old-fashioned sense of justice. In the game, Gorilla Grodd is the ruthless leader of Gorilla City and is planning to attack the human world and take over the planet. And he has the firepower and soldiers to make this happen. In a few short hours, we break the yoke of oppression forever. So when he is defeated by Aquaman and Black Adam, there is no doubt that if they let him live, he will try to conquer the world once again. And so they do the practical thing and end his life. This is one of those scenes where normally the heroes don't kill the bad guy and we're always sitting there saying they should kill the bad guy. But being faced with it is a bit weird and though we expect this from Black Adam, this scene does really cement the fact that Aquaman is beyond redemption, as the first game portrays him as just doing what he has to do in order to keep his kingdom safe. But this second game shows him as a villain who executes prisoners without due process. Number 4. Victor Zass the death of Zass himself isn't all that significant, although it does ruin the continuity of the comics as Zass was later supposed to kill Alfred. And before anyone says the game and the comics are separate, Neverum have said that the game and the comics have the same continuity and the same universe. So this just seems to be a cock up on the game maker's part. Clearly they don't read all of the Injustice comics. But that aside, the importance of this death isn't who dies, but how Damien executes him for his crimes right in front of his father, Batman. You didn't raise me. The League of Assassins did. <laughs> Problem solved. Choosing to side with Superman and forever ruining their relationship as father and son. It's a pretty hardcore way to introduce newcomers to this universe's version of both Superman and Damian Wayne. And if we're being honest, I think all of us partly agree with killing Zass. After all, he was a violent serial killer who was 100% responsible for the murders he was accused of. Victor Zass. Psychopath. How many women have you killed? <laughs> Hundred... Twenty-one. My only real problem with this is that Damian Wayne just executes him himself, with no trial or even authority to do so. But this is the superhero genre, so you just have to go with it. Number 3. Shazam DC's Captain Marvel has now officially had his name changed to Shazam, and his death in the first game was a terrible moment and a pivotal changing point of the Justice League's regime, even leading to the Flash leaving Superman's side to join Batman's, as this execution shows how truly evil Superman has become in his dictatorial rule. But the problem with Shazam's death is that it doesn't really make any sense. Shazam is as powerful and invulnerable as Superman, and his powers come from magic, which Superman is vulnerable to. Now, as far as I can tell, the logic behind this death is that Shazam wasn't in his superpowered form, but instead in his mortal Billy Batson form, which is why he starts to yell Shazam before Superman stops him. Have you gone nuts? Lois would never want it. Shaz as this word is a spell that transforms him from his mortal to godlike form. But since he didn't finish his spell, he doesn't have his superpowers, and so Superman is able to kill him. 
But this really makes no sense because when he turns his powers off, his form is completely different and that of a young child, something that is even shown in the game itself. All I can assume is that this scene was animated before the game makers knew he was a child in his mortal form and either couldn't afford to spend the money to change it or kept it the same because they thought showing Superman killing a child in cold blood would be going too far for a video game. This may not be the case, but I can't see what else it could be, unless the game makers just didn't do enough research on how powerful Shazam is and genuinely thought Superman could kill him this easily. But the fact of the matter is that Superman could not kill Shazam this easily. Shazam is invulnerable, and though the heat vision may have hurt him, it definitely wouldn't have melted his brain. But it is a powerful death that shows to the entire league that Superman has truly crossed over to the dark side, and that everyone is too scared of him to say anything. Anyone else? This also shows how Superman was able to take control of the world in the first place. Fear is a powerful weapon. Number 2. Lex Luthor In this universe, Lex Luthor isn't evil and is actually Superman's best friend. Unlike your Luthor, I've never indulged in lawbreaking. Superman doesn't suspect his best friend is funding the insurgency. And his death is very emotional for Superman and may actually be what sends him into full supervillain mode, as he feels betrayed by his closest friend, whom he trusted completely as an ally. No dinner this evening? Stefan has a new shipment of that Kansas beef. <laughs> Next time. But when Lex Luthor tries to take down Superman with his kryptonite powered laser, Shazam stops Lex from firing the laser, which ironically allows Superman to kill Shazam about an hour later. Maximum weapons range, 1500 meters. Weapons lock in, 7 seconds. 5 seconds. 1 second. But since he has stopped Luthor from firing his kryptonite laser, he's unable to take down Superman. And so Superman destroys Lex Luthor's power suit and he crushes Lex Luthor's neck, needing two hands to do so because Lex Luthor has had two of the superpowered enhancing pills that give people superpowers in this dimension. And after this, you can see the regret on Superman's face, and hear through his super hearing how everyone can't believe he killed his best friend, and that he's now completely become a villain, until it's too much for him, and Superman flies away to escape their voices in the void of space. But this betrayal is the last significant thing that happens before Superman completely loses it. Before Lex Luthor's death, Superman's actions have a moral grey area and can even appear justified. But after this death, Superman's actions are completely supervillain evil, as he then decides to flatten cities and kill millions of civilians to set an example. Then, I'm finding the dimension these duplicates came from. They'll pay for interfering. And this is without a doubt the second most significant death of the game series, which brings us to the most significant death. Number 1. The Joker Everyone knew that the Joker would be first on this list, because it is the breaking point of Superman that started the whole Injustice event. You drugged me! Made me... Lois, my son. First Krypton, now Metropolis. People you love tend to blow up, don't they? Huh? Superman, don't! Killing the Joker was Superman's first step on the road to becoming a supervillain. And if it hadn't been for the Joker killing Superman's wife and unborn child, effectively pushing him too far and causing Superman to lose his temper, I know it's soon, but think you'll ever love again? Maybe you won't kill your next family. then most likely none of the events in the game would have happened. Superman wouldn't have lost his mind and become essentially a dictator and mass murderer, and would have continued on as a hero to the world. In a way, this shows just how significant one event can be in changing a person's life completely, which was always Joker's point he wanted to prove to Batman, that one bad day he can turn anyone insane, 
It happened to the Joker, and then he did it to Superman and made him lose his mind. The Joker was never able to break Batman in this way, but he was able to break the Man of Steel, showing that Superman was actually quite human after all. I could have prevented Metropolis, saved my family! Crime took my family too, Clark. If you weren't the gun... The Joker's full plan was to link her bomb detonator to Lois Lane's heartbeat, so that when her heart stopped beating, a nuclear bomb would detonate Metropolis, killing millions and destroying the city. After attaching the detonator to her heart, he used a combination of Scarecrow's fear gas mixed with kryptonite on Superman to make him think that Lois Lane was Doomsday. Then when he attacks Doomsday, he kills Lois Lane and his unborn child, and detonates the nuclear bomb in Metropolis, destroying his hometown. In Superman's mind, he destroyed Metropolis. Superman was vulnerable, probably for the first time in his life. His fear won out. Green Arrow died trying to explain that to him. And that is the five best deaths in the two Injustice video game story mode. Do you agree with the order of these deaths, or do you think it should have been different? Or is there someone else you think should have been on this list? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and just like to say a quick thank you to those of you who made this video possible by donating to Needle Mass Productions' page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that is helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into short animated films. If you're interested in donating or just want to find out more, a link is in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.